button. Hello, everybody. And I'm guessing there's still a lot of people that are in bed, obviously, in different parts of the world, you know, just going to bed. <laughs> but anyway, I thought I would do a live video from in the workshop. It's Saturday morning uh, to show you how I'd got on with what I started yesterday and I spent all day on it. So basically, I had this huge piece of, I think it's ash, ash or oak, uh, that I got from a local tree surgeon, Steve Limmer, uh, and it's even got one of the, the dogs to stabilise this splitting. So that's going to be cool for where I hang it from. So anyway, this has been done. Uh, in most part, nearly all of it, with my Merlin 2 by King Arthur's Tools, uh, which was sent to me by Arthur Aveling of King Arthur's Tools and their wood turning uh, Nick Agar. So they sent me this and flipping heck, you know, it is a mind blowingly capable tool. We have just filmed a video, which is more of an in-depth look at it and a review. Uh, and here's the, the Nick Agar accessories that came with it. Uh, I've just put them in this plastic uh, toolbox. Uh, it's got a, a quick release aluminium oxide disc on there that I've had some uh, sanding action with. And this is the, uh, the Nick Agar signature carbide disc. Now, what makes this so special is it has the the cutting teeth on this face here on the edge and on the back so a lot of the the stuff here you're seeing the grooves uh the the rays on the sun a lot of it most of it the outlines using it for drawing has been done with uh nick's very thin very, very capable, wonderful uh, disc. So, uh, I hope I hope some of you are here. And unfortunately, uh, I don't know if there's any chat. Uh, so Nicola can <laughs> uh, tell me what's going on. But chat amongst yourselves if if you if you if you're here. I don't even know if anyone's here. I hope you are. Uh, and yeah, what I wanted to say was obviously you, those of you that know uh, us, we have sold our property here and we have purchased a what used to be the coaching house in a village in Derbyshire. Uh, and it's a place that Nicola and I love dearly, the Derbyshire countryside where we're going to. It's a highly desirable little hamlet. Uh, and we we bought the coach house in the village, so uh, to hang a piece the day we move in, I have uh, made this uh, German woodcut inspired uh, wall hanging. So uh, I am a huge fan of the German woodcuts. I used to love looking at them, and you know me, especially the ones that were quite macabre. Uh, you know the the scenes of skeletons, you know, during the plague and things like that, and you know, uh, graveyards. I thought they were really evocative and I did love the look of them. So this is a bit of my homage to the woodcuts of old. Uh, so anyway, what we've got here is I powered a tree uh, and some, uh, oh, I'll, I'll explain it in a minute. Uh, power carved the tree uh, using the Merlin 2 and then the, the trunk texture was done using... Just bear with me, bear with me. Where is it? Uh, this engraver, uh, this percussive engraver, which I find far more controllable uh, and less skittish. Uh, and that did. Next. Leona Faye Woodtunning. That's fantastic, Chris. So it said then reconnect. So anyway. Uh, yeah, it took me hours and hours to do the outline. Uh, so I was just sort of like freehand, in, freehand sketching with Nick's uh, thin signature disc. But then I did employ a Dremel with the router bit attachment. Uh, 
uh, when I needed to do this a bit more intricate. So I was using the Dremel, just like uh, a pencil with the router bit. So I just freehanded this uh, well on a little bit of grass. This signifies a pond, lots of little ponds uh, and, and natural uh, water features in the Derbyshire countryside. Uh, and uh, a feature of the Derbyshire countryside is uh, there's lots and lots of the original wells from the villages. So every year they have well dressings, part of the tradition in the villages. So there's a lot part uh, of the way of life there that we like. So, that, you know, is in relief. Uh, and that's that disc. So we move up then. So obviously huge farms are us around there. Uh, and obviously Leona and Steve Twider, people like that, uh, many people, and Pat Carroll, lots of people that live in Ireland and things like that, rural areas. Uh, so this signifies ploughed fields. So you've got furrows and then a... Uh, and again, I did, if I'm moving close, I did the texture. Is that in focus? I don't know why mountains... Same as what I did on the well. I did the sun and a cloud. Now, really, the cloud should be in the foreground. I put the sun in the foreground because I want to will and, you know, ask the cosmos to give us more sun than cloud. So that's why I did it. The sun is in the foreground because I want more sun. Uh, so that's it. Uh, so yeah, it was all done and then using the 3M Rolox, uh, it was all tidied up uh, and I've uh, had absolutely hours and hours of fun doing this. It took me a long time and again, my brain's going, whoa, whoa, what's happening? Uh, but yeah, just take your time, use the Dremel sort of like a freehand uh electric pen as it were and just and just and just did what i felt like i wanted to do so if i just flip over the board this has had a sanding uh, i've not gone too too mental with it still got a lot of the saw marks in it which which is fine i didn't want to you know it's it, i didn't want it as smooth as a bloody skirting board i want it rustic and tactile so There you have that. So what I am going to do now is if we go over here, uh, excuse me, I've got bits. I'm just going to be feeling myself around a bit because I've got the hoover out and stuff. So I'm going to give it a wax finish. So if we go into my Kosh cupboard here. Uh, that should be, because that's where I put it, uh, my Hampshire Sheen should be the high gloss. So that's pretty tricky. What's this over it? Right, got a little tin opener. So what I'm going to do is apply some wax to this now. So let's see if I can get this lid off one-handed oh result that's a little multi-tool there uh, but it's also got a tin opener I did get one off Martin but guess what I lost it go figure so you've got that and now I am going to get a clean brush obviously doing all this work I've had you know the power cap out and it's just been uh, recharged over there uh, it went flat on me. Luckily, at the end of the day, it ran all day. So please, please, when you're doing all this power carving stuff, uh, make sure you've got really good dust protection. I've had, yesterday it was beautiful, the weather, so I had uh, doors open and... Uh, I don't want to have a paintbrush that's that wide, it won't fit in the tin. We're turning with Steve Twiddle. Your coffee is going cold, Chris. Three okay. exclamation hey, marks. Hey, it said that. Whoa, it said that then. 
your coffee's going cold. Thanks. That wasn't why. What's how? How's that happened? Uh, anyway, it's tea, turning, talking, and tea, talking, turning, and tea. I wonder why it said that. That's freaking awesome. It's never done that before. Leona Faye Woodturning, I've got the dust protection. Just need the power carver now. Oh, right. Yeah. Hold on. It's talking. Uh, Leona, good morning. And Steve, you've got the dust protection. Just need the power carver. Well, these uh, Merlins from King Arthur's Tools, there's some next level shit going on with them. Holy moly. And the fact that they've got the variable speed. Uh, obviously, I, I was having and using the Proxon for years. I'm sorry, the Proxon is good. This is just next level, this Merlin 2. The variable speed, it's obviously, I think it's got more grunt. It's better designed. It's more ergonomic. You know, uh, it's... Wood turning with Steve Twiddle. Your phone loves us Irish folk, Chris. Leona Fay Wood turning. I know. It looks brilliant. My phone loves you Irish people. Yeah, indeed it does. And uh, as I've said before, on my mother's side, my my grandmother and my aunts and my cousins are Irish. They're from Roscommon, uh, which is cool. So I've got, you know, uh, deep love for the Irish because I am uh, partly Irish. Uh, so, yeah, not wrong with that. I've just heard the door open. So, excuse me. Where's the handle? So, I'll just catch that up. So, yeah, what I'm going to do... Leona Fay Woodturning, let me know if you're selling your procs and Chris. Three exclamation marks. I will do, Leona. Uh, I'll let you know. At the moment, I'm keeping it as a spare... Uh, but, uh, yeah, thanks for the offer and I will consider you, of course I will. Uh, is it wrong to say, uh, sweetheart in this day and age? So, oh no, you can't call me sweetheart. I'm, uh, I am uh, ident identifying as something else, but yeah, I'll keep you in mind, sweetheart. Don't worry about that. Uh, but at the minute I'm keeping it because, you know, I like to have a lathe set up for pens and a lathe set up for general work and stuff like that. So, uh... I'm thinking of maybe uh, just keeping hold of it just just in case. You never know. Uh, but I don't think anything's going to go Pete Tong with the Merlin. It's Leona Fay Woodturning, call me whatever you like, Chris. Thanks, mate. <laughs> yeah, sweetheart, yeah. I just don't know everyone, you know, that's bloody, it's in the news all the time. You can't call me this and you can't call me that. And uh... Woodturning with Steve Twiddle. No, that's fine to say stuff like that, Sugar Lips XX. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sugar Lips. Yeah, so. Yeah, you just can't bloody say anything these days without offending someone when they can all feck off. Uh, yeah, I said feck. So, anyway, let's get down to business here. So, I have got here... Uh, Brush, Hampshire Sheen, High Gloss. So, I'm taking the easy. I hope this is in frame. I mean, it's in my hand, on my on my stomach, which is significantly smaller, everybody. Uh, on my diet, we're still there, but, you know, that's... We're still no bread, no chips, no potatoes. Uh... No pasta, no rice, tons of veg, fish, meat, fruit and salads. Uh, so that's cool. So. Getting a lot of wax rubbed in. So yeah, this, this, this whole power carving thing is, it's freaking awesome. The Junk 2. Hi Chris, just tuned in which Merlin kit did you buy? Uh, yeah, good morning, John. I'm loving my phone talking to me. Flipping it. This is a revelation. Uh, John, I didn't buy it. I was given it by King Arthur's Tools and Nick Agar. They're supporting me. Uh, and they've sent me this to use in my demos and videos such as this. So, uh, I got... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sort of like ruining a video here because I've just filmed a video this week. Uh... 
all about this, but it'll be in more depth. So, uh, I hope you're getting that. It's that one. So, Nick and Arthur, Arthur Aveling that owns King Arthur's Tools. Uh, Nick is based in Georgia. Uh, and King Arthur's Tools are in Florida. And at Christmas, we got a video call, FaceTime video, from Nick and Arthur. Nick had told Arthur all about me. Uh, and obviously, this power carving wouldn't have happened if I hadn't have spent the day with Nick Agar 18 months ago on his power carving course. It's all because of Nick uh, that I'm, you know, I was able to use the Merlin. I used the Merlin at his workshop uh, and a couple of his signature accessories. But Nick told Arthur about me. We got a video call and Arthur and Nick said they'd love to send me over a Merlin too and all the bits bar one. They did not send me the eight tooth chain saw disc thingy. Uh, if I want to pull the trigger and buy one of those myself, that's cool. I know they're very dangerous. Uh, Nick and Arthur took that out of the kit because uh, they, they didn't they didn't want to. They know. Look, I'm blind. You know, I have caught my thumb uh, a couple of times uh, with the. The power carving, the Proxom, haven't done it with this in the early days. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're very powerful tools. Uh, so they didn't send me the the, uh, the uh, eight-tooth chainsaw one, which I think would have come with this kit. Uh, so that's fair enough. Can't blame them for that. They're looking out for me. Uh, and if I want to, like I say go down that route and get something a bit more aggressive. You know, I can do it with my own volition. What's turning with Steve Twiddle? I wonder, will they be available at Makers Central? Uh, I don't know. I can tell you uh, where they are available. Turner's Retreat, the Tool Post and cl uh, Classic Hand Tools. So, uh, I, I, uh, I know that they're sort of like the, the retail outlets uh, in the country at the moment that are stocking this stuff. Uh, and also, Nick is, uh, you know, Nick's collaborations and involvement with Chromacraft as well. Uh, in America, Nick's doing those great infill stencils that uh, I was given a free uh, sugar maple leaf to have a mess with. And uh, Nick has spoken to Chromacraft in America and they're going to be sending me you know, more of the infill stencils to try and use in my demos. And they're great because you put the peel off on uh, and then, you you know, you're fogging your base colours and then you use the infill stencil to put all the detail. Uh, where's the tin? Tin's there. Come here, tin. We're turning with Steve Twiddle. Hi, Mike Walt, waving hand emoji. Hi, Mike Walt. How are you? Uh, so, but hey, Mike, I hope you're not driving your bus at the minute. That'd be pretty sketchy. Uh, but I hope you're well. Love to Muriel. The junk too. Brilliant. I've been looking at it for ages, but not bought yet. There's lots of different kits. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, John, there's lots and lots of different options. You can spec them up quite highly. You can get, you know, fixed speed, variable speed, and you can get quite a few different options depending on, you know, what you're going to use it for and your budget, obviously. So, yeah, uh, for those that have just joined, this is my... I'll just do a shot from down here. Uh, this is my uh, woodcut-inspired Derbyshire wall hanging power carved with the King Arthur's Merlin 2 uh, and just a little bit of Dremel work uh, for the really tiny stuff that uh, I just decided to do. So I'm just applying this wax. What I'm going to do is get a stiff brush in a minute. Start buffing it up. I could use a cloth, of course, but the brush bristles will get into the other areas and 
I'll, I'll, I'll just end up snagging uh, the cloth and getting bits of bloody fabric. It would be a lint-free cloth, but I'd still end up getting bits of fabric. We're standing with Steve Twiddle. Are you going to warm the wax up with a heat gun before buffing it, Chris? Uh, no, because I'm a slacker. Uh, <laughs> no, I wouldn't do it with a heat gun because me and heat guns... Uh, oh, yeah, I'd, I'd use a heat gun for stripping paint. Uh, I'd use a, a hairdryer. So, with that being said, Steve, I'll get my hairdryer out. Let me just put the lid... Uh, hair dryer. I've, let me just, I know I've got four things plumbed in this. So disconnect one. Get the world's most expensive and greatest uh, hair dryer out. I bet James Dyson is shitting himself when he sees this. Whoops. Not only am I blind, but I'm working one handed now, so I'm dropping stuff all over the floor. I'm scared of tripping up over something, but you know, if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much room. It's a Nina, Nina. Right, here we go. So, busy, busy year coming up. We're moving house. The Newark show in the Midlands is in a couple of weeks. We're standing with Steve Twiddle. You're my hero, Mr. Fisher XXX. I'm nobody's hero. Nobody's hero. I just like to show people what's possible and hopefully inspire as many people because I ain't going down without a fight, that's for sure, blind or not. Just think 50, 60 years ago, I'd have been in a home for the blind, something like that. Uh, so, imagine... Imagine what had happened if they saw me. Well, they, they have seen me. They know all about me. Henshaws and the R and I B and other establishments. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, if there's any people going to listen to this from UK Men's Sheds uh, Association, good morning. I'm going to swap hands. So, yeah, get out in your sheds and your workshops. Stop, you know, thinking about things. Get in there, have fun, have a bit of therapy. So I'll do this in stages. Where's the tree? There. So you got that, and then mm. This stain, I, I think it's it's in a little tin that I had. Uh, it should be the light oak. And maybe I will be better off. Just let that sit a bit and I'll hit this with a bit more heat up here. Make sure the stain's properly dry. So yeah, light oak. Where am I?
Nicholas said she didn't want anything too dark. Uh, you know, we're moving into a Georgian property uh, and we want, you know, a lot of natural wood and things. It's got an ingle nook fireplace in the dining room and, you know, real fires dotted all over the place. But we don't want to go too dark, you know, not like, not like Jacobean. Wood turning with Steve Twiddle, just because I'm a fire addict, I think I would have been tempted to highlight the raised spots by scorching it. Oh, you would. Pyromaniac, honestly. But again, you see, that's adding more darkness to it, and I didn't really want to do that. In fact, I'll tell you what I am going to do, because that's just so porous. Back over here. Uh... Should be this one. Uh, sanding sealer. Messages. Now, Matthew. Hello, Chris. I just spoken to my friend. Can we meet in the station tomorrow at 12 and start filming right away? Thank you. I've just had a message from Matthew, uh, my intern. He's uh, filming his dissertation for his degree. It's his final year. So he's uh, interviewing me, bless him. Uh, so. He's just asked if we can pick him up at the station. Him and his friend tomorrow, who's on the same course. So he's, Matthew's doing the interview and his friend's going to be a uh, cameraman. We're turning with Steve Twiddle. Oh, Lord Nicola, don't send Chris any of your saucy messages. What? Saucy messages. Right then, so let's get some sealer on it. Otherwise, it's just going to suck all the wax in. Instagram. Now, Christopher, none, 71 liked your photo. Christopher Nunn liked my photo, it's just said on Instagram. So, getting the sealer in. And I'll denib this with a Scotch Bright. Before I apply the wax, so making sure I've got it well in. Move along. Where's the pot? There. So yeah, really looking forward to moving to Derbyshire. It's got a cellar. 
I've always wanted a place with a cellar. Doctor D. Woodtoner, looks like you have been having fun, Chris. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, I have indeed. <laughs> Power carving. Uh, woodcut style. I uh, hope you're okay over there. Dr. D. Tarver in Denmark. So, yeah, I'm just applying some sealer. Paul Hauk B. Paul Hauk B? What? Dr. D. Woodtoner, I have just got in. Just got in. Wood tunning with Steve Twiddle. Absolutely no offense meant here, Chris, as I'm sure you know. But it's no wonder the unknowing folk find it hard to believe you are blind when you continue to produce these amazing projects. Well, this is... You know, I know there's, there's a guy in America, you know, that does amazing, amazing portrait pictures who's blind. Uh, and he will f feel his subject and then he will uh, do, do the portrait. He knows what colour paint he's using by how the pigment uh, feels in between his fingers. Uh, there's... Uh, a video, I think, on YouTube somewhere about him. I forget his name at the minute, but Charlie told me about him and Charlie was describing it. He makes all his own picture frames with, you know, table saws and mitre saws and, you know, uh, you know, there's the kids in America that are blind and skate slalom, doing skateboard slalom by echolocating and they're going in between the cones and things. That I do believe there's a very severely visually impaired, you know, British lad who's... Uh, a very good mount downhill mountain biker, you know. So it's not like uh, the evidence isn't out there to support, you know, truly gifted blind, you know, people. You know, it's I'm the only one doing what I'm doing, you know, on on such a visible scale, you know, and I am the only totally blind professional accredited wood turner. But, you know, the blind can do anything they want, absolutely anything they want. It just takes us time and, you know, we get anxious and nervous about doing it a lot of the times. But we stick at it and that's the whole point. We stick at it and do it and, you know, it's just incredible what people are capable of, you know, going over old ground. You have to want it enough and believe in yourself, you know, and I, I have just this you know, almost uncanny knack of picturing things in my mind and translating that and, you know, into what I do. And, you know, it's when, once we, when, we, when we decided to set off on this journey, you know, it was like, look, we're either going to go big and really show people what the blind are capable of or we're not going to mess at all, we're not going to bother at all. And when we decided, you know, let's go all in, you know, I've I've really, really had to dig deep and put in thousands upon thousands of hours of practice. And I know I've got lots of videos out on Instagram and YouTube, but that's probably only a quarter of the, the time I've put in. You know, I do so much stuff off camera. So I'm just hitting the sealer now with the hair dryer. Just get me bearings. <coughs> Excuse me.
and I'm going to get a swig of tea. And also the fact that, you know, my father was an engineer, but a great artist. He was great with oil paints and sketching. My brother is a supremely talented artist and he's an architect. Uh, you know, from from my dad, you know, we, we're just really, really... The junk too. When you move house, Chris, does that mean you will be a southerner winking face with stuck out tongue emoji? Always a mank, John, you know that. No, we just want, you know, uh, a, when I'm not demonstrating and we're not traveling and things like that, we want a very relaxed way of life. You know, we want to be in, you know, the proper countryside. It's semi-rural here. Instagram. Now, Josephine at Brooks and Cassidii 056 liked your photo. But we want the full-on country thing. Debbie Beardle. Hi, Chris. Hi, Debbie. So, yeah, we want the full-on country thing, little rural village, want a slow pace of life. Nicola wants to be, the, you know, she adores Derbyshire, and we both stayed in Derbyshire a few times together. And Nicola wants to go there, so it will inspire her in her photography and her writing and her own projects, you know, see to source. Uh, so we both want to embrace that slower pace of life, the countryside. Dr. D. Woodtoner, Tove and I just delivered some of my work at the shop where I have my work on show. Many regards to yourself and Nicola from both of us in Denmark. Yeah, wow. Uh, that's cool, David. I hope it's selling well for you. And, you know, this... Leona Faye Woodtunning sounds amazing. Best of luck with the move. Cheers, Leona. Uh, so, yeah, I wanted this to be inspired by a woodcut. The junk, too. Sounds idyllic, mate. Chuffed for you and Nicola. Thanks, pal. Yeah, I think Bamba's going to love it as well with all the sniffs and the smells and the fresh air. So, Doctor, Doctor, D, Wittener, keeping my head above water, thanks. Oh, you've got to keep your head above water. No, it sounds amazing, and the, the cinema in the village is in the village hall, and they do show quite recent films. We were looking yesterday because Nicholas started, you know, keeping tabs of what's going on in the village. Uh, the cinema, the... The village pub uh, that hosts the post office three mornings a week. And they don't do food, but a mobile pizza van comes apparently on a Friday night. So, yeah, anyway, just let me stop that a second. So, yeah, I wanted this to be sort of like woodcut inspired, rustic, of course. I wanted it to be a bit abstract uh, and just, you know, do my best. As, you know, a sighted artist could do a much better job of the well. But, you know, Nicola said, oh, is that a wishing well? So, Dr. D. Woodtoner, have you sold house and when will you be moving? Uh, yes, David, we've sold the house. Uh, we've had an offer and we've accepted it and there is a sold sign on. Don't know, you know, it's sort of like the the legal machinery has taken over now. So it's, you know, surveys and backing and f toing and backing and throwing and with, you know, solicitors and all that sort of stuff. So who knows, early summer, you know, as soon as it can get done, it can get done. The people that have bought this house are absolutely lovely and bless them, they flew to Mauritius on Thursday to get married. So... Uh, this is a, a big home that we've got here. It's five bedrooms, four toilets, uh, and they've got uh, four kids ranging from nine to 20. So it's going to suit them lovely. Woodtunning with Steve Twiddle. Thanks for the update, Chris. Love to you. 
Nicola and Banda. Our granddaughter is getting christened today, so I'm off to get ready. Chad soon made ex. All right, yeah, don't forget to wash behind your uh, ears, Steve, and have a great day. Love to the family, and I hope I hope you uh, you have a great day, and I hope your granddaughter screams her lungs out in the church, which is always a good uh, a good sound to hear. So yeah, XX back at you, mate. I was only joking about bawling her head off. I hope she enjoys it. So I think I'm getting ready now to, I'm just having a feel. Make sure there's no puddles of uh, sealer and there is just a little bit of a puddle there, a damp spot. So. Right, I think that's good. Right then, let's get some nylon out. Nylon webbing. So, should have a piece in hither. There you go. So this is just gonna denib this sealer. Doctor, D, Woodtoner, smiling face with sunglasses emoji, face with heart-shaped eyes emoji, face with heart-shaped eyes emoji, very pleased on your behalf. Thank you, Dave. Uh, thank you so very much. Yeah, it's, it's a new chapter in our lives, but one, you know, a chapter we're both really looking forward to and uh, can't wait. And obviously, you know, Charlie's excited as well. He's going to have a, a, new, a new room and... I'm going to have a new workshop. Oh, incidentally, the workshop uh, has a stone floor. It still has the original fire in there because uh, that's where I'm guessing they would have stored the carriage when it was a coach house. Uh, or the coach. However you want to term it. So, just going very, very lightly. So yeah, I can't believe we bought a you know a Georgian period property. But you have to, you know, when you when you when you decide to do something, you have to seize it with both hands and say, look, you know, Nicola and I we're not old, but we're not getting any younger neither. So, you know, you have to go right. Well, what's stopping us from moving? And the answer was nothing. You know. Dr. D. Woodtoner, look forward to hearing more when we meet in May. Yeah, certainly, David. Yeah, uh, at Maker Central uh, in May uh, on the Tormek stand. Uh, hanging out with the lovely guys from Tormek. So Pontus is there, uh, who is the CEO of Tormek. Pontus, obviously, is from uh, Sweden. Uh, and... It's all been sort of like put on and hosted by Brimark Tools, which is a division of Axminster Tools and Machinery, and they're the importers of uh, Tormek. So, uh, that's one coat of sealer. I'm going to give it another... Alert. Low battery. Close. YouTube. Finish. Button. Right. Well, I'm just getting a low battery... Uh, message so uh, I just need to go and get might as well bring you with me so back into the house through the utility room need to get my battery charger uh, phone charger into the kitchen phone charger Hello, how you doing, pal? He always comes to say hello when I come back in. I'll be back in a bit, Bam Bam. Doing a video. Bye-bye.
Catch you later. And obviously I know he's there because I can hear his chuffing paws padding on the floor. So again, you know, it's you just have to <laughs> always engage your brain when you're blind, but it's not like, oh gosh, how does he do? How did he know the dog was there? Because I can hear him. Uh You know, some people haven't got the brains they were born with to just work things out. Like I have to. And, you know, most of the blind have to. We have to work things out. That's why it's so tiring being blind. But, you know, it's totally doable. Right, as far as I'm aware, I've plugged in. So... Let's start at this end. It's not the world's longest uh So I hope I'm not boring you. This isn't, you know, well I enjoy this. I've said it before. This is part of the process. I don't mind it at all. Love it. So You know, these are just cheap brushes, so if I do happen to uh, get any bristles detaching and landing on the work, hopefully the uh, nigh web will uh, remove them. So... Uh, I spoke to Tony from British Hardwoods the other day. He should be sending me some wood for my demos. British Hardwoods uh, that are based in Keithley, Yorkshire. Uh, they're supporting me and giving me some wood uh, to use. So he said he'll be getting some together for me for my demos. Uh, great guy, lovely guy. Lovely company, great, you know, their facility there, you know, it's state-of-the-art, great machinery, you know, amazing sawmill and vacuum kilns and all sorts of stuff. So, thank you very much to Tony and the team at British Hardwoods for supporting me. Uh, some shout-outs, so yeah, let's do some shout-outs. Obviously, uh, thank you to all you guys that are tuning in and listening and, you know... Even if you've all gone and left me now, it's all right. I'm just going to keep talking to myself. Par for the course, really. But yeah, big shout out to all my supporters and followers, both on YouTube and all the other social media uh, outlets. No? No. Places. Uh, yeah, big shout out to British Hardwoods. Uh, Chestnut, Terry and the guys at Chestnut, uh, Martin Saban Smith, Hampshire Sheen. Big shout out to uh, Nick Agar and Arthur Aveling of King Arthur's Tools and Nick Agar and Chromacraft. Big shout out to them. Huge shout out to UK Men's Sheds, doing great, great work, getting as many people as they can out of their homes into the sheds and workshops that are dotted around the country, making friends, promoting, you know, uh, good mental health and uh, doing, honestly, great work in the communities, uh, getting people working with their hands. You know, a lot of people, you know, that join are suffering with mental illness, depression, anxiety. They might be recently bereaved, widowed and things like that, you know. So it's good to get them out and about uh, and interacting again, which is cool. So, happy days. So, I just need to let this all uh, dry now. I bet my arm's not long enough to do this, but who cares?
So we've got Newark at the end of this month. I've got Axminster Tools and Machinery. I've got Axminster Tools and Machinery Devon in April. We've got Maker Central in May. Wood turning clubs all over the country. Moving house. We must love it. Leona Faye Woodturning, going to have a shed therapy day myself today. Catch you all later. Yeah, bye, Louine. Uh, Louine. Uh, <laughs> I need more tea. Goodbye, Leona. Thanks for checking in and hanging with me for a bit uh, and have a great day and do some amazing uh, yourself. So, uh, shed therapy for Leona Faye there over in Ireland. So, uh, ciao. And uh, also, I just want to say, I know Steve's going to get ready for the christening, but best of luck, Steve. I know you're doing your creator van uh, and all that. So, hope that goes well. What's that now? Dr. D. Woodtoner by Leona. Yeah. Oh, I'll be exploring the limits of my uh, phone cable in a minute. But if I was smart, like I keep saying I am, I would move the cable reel. Yeah, whoa, locking everything off. To where I need to be. Everyone go make yourself a cup of tea whilst I'm doing this, or coffee. Now depending where you are in the world, a tequila sunrise if you want. That's how I feel. Just having a feel to see if I can feel any pooling or tacky spots. Obviously I put it on quite thick with the brush. to feel obviously I can't see it so I have to feel whereas if you can see you'd obviously oh yeah there's a big puddle but feeling better
So I've got my phone caught around my hair dryer. So, I mean, this has probably been dry for the past five minutes, but again, because I can't see what I'm doing, go belts and braces. Anywho, that must be that must be good enough. So, let's feel. There it is. Let's do some de nibbing again, just nice and gentle. Just want to knock this back a bit. Very light touch. And I can just feel the nigh web uh, feeling the textured part, so that's fine. But that's why I'm just going nice and gentle. So obviously, yeah, again, you know, a huge inspiration for me is Nick Agar. The junk too. What's the timber you're working on, Chris? I think it's a piece of ash, John. Uh, a big slab of ash. Uh, it smelt like ash whilst I was uh, carving it. So I think it's ash. I'm sure it was ash. Uh, but it's got a light oak, an English light oak uh, stain. So it you know, fits in with where we're going to and again you know it's a period property so uh we didn't want to you know it is a really nice look that dark jacobean oak look uh but you know we want to inject a bit of light nicola loves light and color uh and just because we're you know moving into an old georgian coach house doesn't mean that we can't uh add color so that's all very good My fan has just turned off, so the workshop must be uh, warm enough at the minute. The junk too looks fab. Looks fab. Thanks, John. You can be my eyes, mate. So, anyway, let's get some wax on it now. No, oh, that feels better. I've sealed it. Here's Nicola or Charlie. Who is it? Nicola or Charlie? Yes. Oh, gas. <laughs> Here's Nicola. Oh, Nicola's brought me a cup of tea. Uh, here. Thank you. All right. So how's it look? That's really good. What colour have you done it? Uh, English light oak. Which is what you said, a nice... Yeah, it looks really nice. That's a good colour. Yeah. So... Yeah. Uh, Do you want me to the camera? Yeah. Thank you. If anyone, Sorry, got my finger there. If anyone speaks, it's been speaking to me. Do you, have you yeah, been? I heard. Um, I was just listening upstairs. I was just editing a video, so... Um, I heard Shout you... Up, yeah. yeah. Oh, let me just turn that sound down. Yeah, so, yeah, it's been talking and then some t uh, periodically I've been just touching the screen and it's been saying, so that's cool. So, Steve Twydale's gone off to get a, a wash because the granddaughter's been christened. Right, Leona's just gone. Yeah, she's just gone. Um, I think Dr. D's gone. Um, the John MC, what's the timber you're working yeah, on? I told him. Oh, right, you said that bit. Ash. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Debbie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it looks, I love this tree. The bark on it looks amazing. So, yeah, that was done with the engraving tool, the percussive engraver. Yeah. So, yeah, it's quite... And it kind of looks old already. Well, that's... What I had in my head, these old German woodcuts. Yeah. Uh, back in the set. You know, let's turn that fan back on. So, yeah, the old German woodcuts is what I had in mind as the picture, the mental imagery. And, you know, it's quite 
in a way I wanted it to be a bit abstract as well you know and there were themes you know tree countryside the wishing well for all not the wishing well the well for all the well dressings that are done in Derbyshire mm. in the villages little pond there and then you know the ploughed furrows some hills or mountains and then I did the sun in the foreground because I want it to be sunnier more than it's cloudy. Yeah. So that was just a bit of, you know, artistic license. So I, I like this bit on the tree where you've got the little bits there. Yeah, well, it's, obviously I, had to, I wanted it to look like a tree, so I needed yeah. to incorporate elements. But again, just with the, the Nick Agar three-sided disc, you know, it's just that it's simple. You know, just a few shapes like that and all this was drawn around just with that thin disc so you're just sort of like steering it around completely random shape same with this and then you can just knock everything back down then to make things proud and stand up but you can do things proud or sunken and it all just i was just having fun going right yeah well i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna do this and that feels good and Glenn Senior says afternoon or oh sorry still morning. Yeah, what time is it? <laughs> Hi Glenn. About twenty past eleven. <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, the Merlin Two uh, set that Nick Agar and Arthur Aveling sent me to use. I've I have had a play with them now, and I did. A, a power carved woodcut yesterday which is going to be a wall hanging uh, for our, uh, the cottage we bought in Derbyshire so yeah, I really spent all day yesterday and you know all the day today so far just feeling now for where I need to buff this wax so yeah I've had lots of fun with it So, yeah, you're taking inspiration from wherever you can. So, you know, obviously, Nick Agar being an amazing artist and really being at one with these power carvers and the Merlin, which has helped develop, you know. Yeah, I get inspiration from all over the place. But, you know, a lot of the medieval woodcuts from Germany have inspired this piece. That, you know, I would love to be able to do a skeleton one, but mm -hmm. it just end up looking like the Michelin Man. Um, the John C2 says, nothing better than eating a bacon butty and watching someone else do the graft. Yeah, quite right, John. Um, Glenn Senior says, are you guys moving to the proper side of the Pen Pennines? Derbyshire, <coughs> not Yorkshire. quite potent that um well it's wax and yeah oh yeah i've got some good chemical action going on in here so really i should be wearing my uh my respirator not my power cap my respirator but can't talk with one of them on so just this bristle brush here now if i get any tissue And just see nib parts and get rid of the tissue. So anyway, Glyn, what have you been up to lately? I've been hearing some mad stuff you on Instagram. <laughs> you and uh, Wayne the Woodturn. I've heard sort of like maniacal laughing coming from your workshop and some weird sounds. Oh, he you says said was... you've missed a bit. Yeah, sure I have. <laughs> I probably have. Uh, yeah, but did you tell me what you've been turning? Well, they've, I've just seen pictures of massive things, really big platters and just huge pieces. Yeah, well, I heard them. You know, it's not like flipping out there. Up to some fun, but sketchy. We turned a three foot by one foot bowl. Nice. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I like turning small pieces myself. <laughs> so. Glenn Senior, gonna get auctioned for Macmillan. All right. right. Let's start at the top. So you got the sun and the cloud. Then you got the mountains and water. No. What's the, the oh opinion. fields? That's the fields, the furrows. Yeah. And then you've got the wishing well, and the lake. It's more of a pond. A pond. Okay, we're having a pond, and then we've got the tree. That looks really cool. So, uh, uh, medieval German-inspired woodcut. But obviously, the, you know, a lot of wood carving in English uh, architecture and history. But yeah, it's got the dog in the top, and it came with this that Steve Limmer had whacked in the tree surgeon to stabilise that crack. So that's already built in uh, hanging point. So there you have it. And what I need to do is seal the sides and the back and polish them as well. But I'm not going to do that on camera. Uh, I thought I'd just do this bit and hang out on Saturday morning. Uh, but it feels amazing. Oh yeah, and I also textured this just for, you know, maybe a bit of yeah. you know, field action behind. But uh, Debbie says that looks amazing. Glyn says, well done, mate. That's awesome. So, yeah, and I'll just... For the, yeah, so 95% was done with the Merlin 2 and the Nick Agar signature range of accessories both the carbide discs and the aluminium oxide uh, oversized quick detachable discs the roll lock bristle discs uh, the hook and loop oversized normal sanding pads so yeah and then the wishing well what I did was I got my, my router attachment in a Dremel and I did a very juvenile but it works uh, interpretation of a well so the only way I could get that detail was to just sort of like I did the circle first, an oval, and then I did the base, and then I just did the supports and a very, very uh, abstract, rudimentary roof, but you, you can tell what it is. So I'll just use the Dremel as a, uh, a carving pencil, really, and then uh, use the percussive engraver to do the texture on the grass, on the well, uh, and on the tree trunk. Oh, and also on the mountains, that was percussive engraver. But 95% done with the uh, King Arthur's Merlin 2 uh, Nick Agar uh, signature series. So that's it, folks. I'm going to go and carry on with this uh, and have a cup of tea. So thank you so very much. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Uh, hope, you know, uh, things go well for you all. And our thoughts are with you, Glyn, uh, with what's happening over there. Uh, yeah, and keep doing those huge bowls. They sound a lot of fun. So thank you, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, and if you get a few minutes spare today, get in your workshops and your sheds uh, and be creative. If I can do it, you can do it. Uh, and it, it's just about having fun and believing in yourself. You know the spiel and the rhetoric anyway, guys. Uh, so I'm out of here. Keep on turning. Bye. Finish. But fin finish. Button. Finish. But are you sure that you will end? But end, end. Button.